let's come uh, to a comfortable seated position. So if you wanted to, if you have any kind of prop like a block or a bolster or even a thick uh, couch pillow will do, bring it underneath your hips so that your hips are slightly elevated. That way they feel comfortable, your knees can be down on the floor. If you feel like your knees are way up like this, it's okay. But you can also place stuff underneath your knees like pillows or blankets so that they are also supported. And then from there, just let the hands rest on your knees. And we we'll just take a moment to move the rib cage. Just gonna start by pressing the rib cage to the right and to the left. Keeping the hips grounded, so not trying to lift through the hips at all. And let the movement transfer just to the rib cage, but now also into the shoulder. Moving the shoulder a little bit up as you move side to side. So we're starting to kind of just Refamiliarize ourselves with our spine. And then let's start to move this now instead of side to side, front and back. So coming back to middle, hands on the knees, round the spine, tuck the chin into chest, fan out the shoulders. Inhale, pressing it forward, lifting heart, lifting chest, roll shoulders back, look up. And then again, rolling from one to the other. Kind of with your own breath. And however fast or slow you'd like to make it. So sometimes moving a little bit quicker allows you to warm up the body a little bit faster. Sometimes we move a little bit slower. It's just a little bit more mindful and more intentional. So you're really feeling each as you move through. And then with this last one, coming back to center. Settling into our spine, relaxing shoulders away. You can bring your hands to your lap or leave them on your knees. And let's go ahead and close the eyes. So after that little bit of movement, perhaps there's some lingering sensations within the spine or the body. So with the eyes closed, you draw your awareness inward. And we're gonna see if we can pinpoint any parts of our bodies that are talking to us today. And you don't have to hold a deep conversation with this body part, but just acknowledge, oh, my shoulder is feeling a certain way, or there's a little bit of a funny feeling in my left side, lower back, or whatever it is, wherever you're feeling a sensation that is bubbling up to your consciousness, to your field of awareness, simply acknowledge it. And you don't have to do anything about it. You don't have to move. You don't have to rationalize or think about why you're feeling it. Just simply feel it. It's okay. Allow the breath to move effortlessly through the nostrils. Beginning to settle not just the physical body, but also our mind. Couple more breaths here. Exhale slightly, chin towards the chest. The chin tucked in, down towards the chest stretch the neck or if you'd like you can bring your hands to the back of your head maybe even interlacing your fingers and then using your elbows to add a little deeper stretch be gentle if it's too much just don't add so much you can release the arms or bring the hands further the hands further down to the nape of the neck a few breaths here And then slowly release the hands and bring the chin back up to parallel, blink the eyes, open awareness back into our space. Let's take the right ear down towards right shoulder. So again, just using gravity, using the weight of the head to stretch through that left side neck. But if you want to add a little bit more, you can take right hand to left ear and gently pull down. 
using the weight of your right arm, a little bit of little deepening of the stretch. As you breathe here, you're still bringing that calmness and stillness of body, calmness and stillness of mind. And then slowly release that right hand, and we're just gonna bring the chin to the right shoulder. So just looking down towards that right shoulder, towards the right side of your body. A little different stretch here. Lifting the chin up, back to center, and lifting the head up, back to center. Let's move the shoulders here a little bit before we do the other side. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and take left ear to left shoulder. Just find, as you pull that right shoulder down, you're lengthening through that right side neck. And then if you wanna add a little bit extra feeling here, taking left hand to right ear and finding a little bit more stretch perhaps. Be very gentle. So as you, as you hold your hand to your ear, to your right side of your head, you might decide you'd want to add a little bit more pressure, a little less pressure. Let the neck lengthen. Keep the right side of your head be grounded. And then slowly release the left hand and slowly just roll the chin towards the left shoulder. So a little different type of stretch into the neck. And then exhale, slowly lift the chin back and tilt the head back to center. Shoulder roll here. Let's do two or three moving backwards and then reverse the direction, two or three moving forward. Good. All right. So if you're seated on a cushion, we're gonna move the cushion away to come to the floor, keeping the cross-legged position. So now that you're on the floor, it might be a little bit harder to sit upright. If you find yourself slouching forward, draw in through your navel, lift up through your rib cage, and let the shoulders fall back and down away from the body. So you're creating length in the spine. If you need your hands on your shins to kind of support your straight spine, you can do that or maybe just on your knees. So this is a way for you to support that straight back. So if I turn sideways, your back is nice and straight. And you can use your hands here, like kind of like a suspension bridge to keep you lifted. Once the muscles in your back start to um, engage and strengthen, you will no longer need your hands. You can just let them rest at your lap. So from this position, we're gonna do some side bending. So notice which foot is in front. The back will stay straight the entire time. We're gonna take the left hand to the floor and the right arm up towards the sky. So stretching the right side body. As we exhale, let's bend to the left and maybe walk the left fingertips away, opening to that right shoulder. You can gaze forward or you can gaze up. Possibly that left elbow may be able to come to the floor, but if you bring it to the floor, lifting up through the right hip, it's better to keep the left elbow off the floor and the right hip and right knee down. One more breath, inhale, lengthen through that right side. Exhale, slowly coming back through the center. Release right hand down, left arm up. So moving into the other side. Exhale, bend to the right. So you're reaching through that upper body, so reaching through the fingertips. Walk the right fingertips away and lower that right elbow towards the earth. Doesn't have to come down to the floor, only when it's ready. And then rolling left shoulder back, looking up towards sky. Reaching through fingertips, keep the left hip grounded and rooted. Feel deep, long extension from left hip all the way to left fingertips. And exhale, slowly, gently coming back. Through the center, release both hands to the floor. Little shoulder roll in the middle here. Hands planted down on the floor, lift the chest and just arch back, opening back. You can keep your hips on the floor like, like I'm doing here, or if you want, lift the hips and really arch 
arch, opening heart. So your hips are extending up, your butt's off the floor, and then exhale, head comes back to center, hips come back down. Take your time, and now moving forward, hands in front, lowering your elbows towards the earth to so give you a little bit of support. Or you can walk the arms away, reaching and extending, bringing your forehead towards the mat. Keep the hips back and down, nice and heavy. Lengthen through the top of your head. And inhale, slowly lift the head, walking the fingertips forward, coming back through to center. Good. Then we're going to reverse the feet. So the foot that's in front moves back, and the foot that was behind moves front. Realign your hips, settle in again. Notice already there's a difference in when you switch your feet as, as to how your hips feel. So just make a mental note of that. Hands on other sides of the body. Again, lengthening through spine. The back has been straight this whole time. Let's take it to the left again. Right arm up towards sky. Walk those left fingertips away and reach your body over. Maybe bringing elbow down or just keeping the arms straight. Either way works just fine. Rotate right shoulder back. Keep that right side body heavy as you open up. Gaze up towards sky. Hold it here. Reaching and extending. And then exhale, pressing into that bottom arm, coming back through the center. We'll do the other side. Left arm reaches up. Walk the right fingertips away. Slowly lower right elbow to the floor if it'll go. Keep the left side body heavy. Left leg pressing down towards mat. And reach up and extend. You want to create a sense of length, not just to the left side, body, but to the right as well. So try not to collapse, but lengthen out of the hips. Gaze up towards sky, feel it in your left shoulder. And then exhale, slowly coming back through the center. Shoulder roll forward this time. And plant your hands behind, either just lifting through chest, opening heart, looking up. Or if you want to go a little deeper, pressing into the knees, lifting the hips, and then really dropping your head back, opening through your throat. And exhale, hips come down, head lifts. Take your time, coming forward now. So hands in front, lengthen your spine, fold forward, maybe elbows can come to the floor. And you can hold here with the elbows down, finding your points of resistance, breathing into them. As you breathe into your resistance, seeing if you have a little bit of leg room to lengthen the arms forward, draw the forehead towards the mat. And it's okay if it doesn't touch, you may not touch at first, but you can let the head hang a little bit, pulling the shoulders back. As you find a little bit more room, maybe lowering down a bit more. The breath is steady. And then inhale, slowly lift the head. Walk the fingertips back to center. Let's take a moment to extend the legs out. So like a wide legs extended out, you can kind of adjust so that you are still on your mat, so your heels can stay on your mat if you're on flooring. And then from here, we're gonna come forward. So toes pointing up towards sky, lower yourself down nice and slow, bringing the elbows to the floor. Finding your forward fold here. So if you feel like it's too much, you can always straighten your arms. 
and go a little bit deep. If you feel like you need some more, you can extend your arms forward, walk your elbows away. Be sure to not let your back kind of see or round too much. It's gonna round a little bit, that's you know inevitable. But you wanna try to feel like you wanna bring your rib cage down, not your forehead. So it's not about bringing your forehead to the floor, it's about bringing your belly button and your rib cage to the floor. So it's a little bit of a different mental vision of the posture. As you hold, you might decide you can walk a little further away, or you might decide you need to come back a little bit to maintain the posture. And we practice with kindness. So if you can show yourself kindness, and you're able to exude it with those around you. Soften through the shoulders. We like to hold tension a lot of time, so make that mental and conscientious effort to relax through the shoulder blades and the tops of the shoulders. Each time your body gives you a little bit of more Movement forward, take it, and then listen to the cue and fill in the space. And with the next exhale, lifting up halfway, walking the fingertips back towards body, lengthening spine. We're gonna go ahead and bend the knees. This time the soles of the feet together in Baddha Konasana. So with the soles of the feet together, let the knees fall out. Your feet don't have to be all the way up into your body. They can be away, so I'm kind of making a diamond shape with your legs. One day the knees will fall down to the floor and come down to the floor. I'm still waiting for that day myself. So we practice and we do what we can with the bodies that we have today. That is our, that is the yoga practice that we are involved in right now. It's not about our future body when the knees are down. It's about this body. What can we do? So if you hold on to your ankles, then you're able to lengthen spine. Possible that you might be able to bend through your elbows as you lean forward and then use your forearms against your shins to create that same diamond shape now with your arms as you keep holding on to the tops of your feet. And you want to relax your hands as you fold forward like this. So you don't want to feel like you're pulling or engaging into the arms, really trying to get yourself down there. Just use gravity. Gravity is your best friend here. Gravity will allow you to move into the postures with ease and with surrender. So you're not struggling the whole time. Let the neck lengthen, let the spine lengthen, keep the hips grounded and rooted as you reach the tailbone down and away. And then the top of the head kind of extending up and forward. One day we want our chin on our toes or past our toes and our rib cage on our heels. So we really want to feel that extension of the body. Pull a little bit deeper if you feel good. And then again, surrender to that new shape you're creating. So each time you adjust or move deeper into the shape, you want to feel the exhale surrendering you to this new shape. Do three more breaths. And then slowly lift up through the spine, help the knees back in through center, all the way as frown forward, give yourself a nice hug, forehead to the knees. And then exhale, let's come into straight legs. So we're gonna move the legs straight into Dandasana position. Hands on other sides of the hips, feet flexed, lengthen spine, shoulders back. If your back is feeling a little bit tired, all the muscles in your back that are working to keep you lifted, you gotta engage more into your abdominals. So pull in through the belly and engage into the abdominal muscles to support your back muscles. From here, we're we'll going to Paschimottanasana. So bending forward from the hips, reaching towards the toes, if they're accessible to you, finding your toes, or maybe your heels, or just maybe your ankles or sides of your legs. 
So are you gonna pull yourself down, coming into your posture in whatever version of the posture you can find today? Keep drawing in through navel, lengthening through that front body as much as you do the back body. So the, both the front and the back body are lengthening, reaching away from your hips, so top of the head really extending. And then as you feel ready, just like we've done in the all previous postures, the exhale will allow you to soften perhaps a little deeper into the asana, creating a whole new shape. And then surrendering there. Try not to go any further until you feel the calmness of mind, of spirit, and of body that lets you move a little deeper. Forward folds many times have to do with patience. So we surrender. We let go of having to know what the outcome is or where this choice or this path is leading us. We trust, we become patient. And then slowly inhale, lift the chest. Lengthen spine, shoulders roll back, exhale, slowly release. We're going to do a breath, it's called the breath of fire. It's a practice you do in our Tibetan heart yoga practice. We interlace the fingers to make a fist with the hands and then I'll relax the shoulders back. And then as we exhale, we push the arms forward, creating that forceful breath out. And it can be through the nose or through the mouth. So the inhale draws in, exhale pushes out. Inhale draws in, exhale, inhale, exhale. Good, let's hold this one. With both arms straight, let's just pivot the body to the left. Keeping both arms straight, gaze towards your thumbs, Pull the right shoulder down so your shoulders are square. Keep lengthening through your body, flexing through your legs. Your legs are working. Exhale, let's bend that left elbow and go a little deeper, drawing that right shoulder across the body, this time looking towards that left elbow. Keep the left elbow lifted. Try not to dip it down towards your waist so that left arm is engaged. Rotate torso. Exhale, slowly coming all the way back through the center. Let's do three more breaths here. Inhale. <sighs> Inhale. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> Good. Keeping those arms straight, let's go the other side. So just rotating through torso, gazing towards thumbs. Spine is nice and tall. Feel the rotation in the torso, but keep your hips grounded. As you exhale, bending right elbow, keeping the right elbow lifted, taking left shoulder down across the body, and then look towards the right elbow. Remember to not let that right elbow drop down. Keep it up, parallel to the floor. Left shoulder pulls away from the ear, so it's not hiking up towards the ear. It's down and away. Reach, extend through that left arm. And then exhale, slowly coming back through the center. Three more breaths, inhale. Last one. Beautiful, slowly release the hands. We're gonna cross the feet again, but this time what we're gonna try to do is come into a half lotus. So we're gonna take the left foot down towards underneath the right glute. And then the right foot is gonna to try to come up on top of that left hip. So if this is not accessible to get this foot up here on top, then you're gonna just rest it just like we did before in front. That's okay, we can still do the posture in this position. So either way is fine, you have your options. We're gonna bring the hands to the knees and we're gonna lean forward slightly so that this right knee, especially if the foot is on top, can come down towards the floor. So we're gonna rotate with the right foot on top of the left thigh. We're gonna rotate to the right. So we're dipping that left shoulder in. And you can stay here, finding your 
twist your rotation. Again, finding patience in your mind, in your heart. And then we're gonna take that left hand to the right knee. See if we can go into a half bind by taking the right arm around and see if maybe we can find our foot. So you're still kind of leaning forward, rotating torso, looking back over right shoulder. And you're using your right hand as leverage to pull yourself through a little bit more. Or you can even extend it and use your left forearm. Exhale, slowly coming back through the center, both hands on the knees. Just for a little counter, let's dip the right shoulder down, look towards the left. Don't worry about the bind on this side, just a little counter stretch. And then exhale, coming back up, release that right foot, bring the right foot underneath the bar at the left hip or behind if you're doing regular cross-legged. And then that left leg comes up and over onto the right thigh, close to the crease where your right leg meets your body. Readjust, make yourself centered. Hands on the knees, come forward. So this coming forward allows you to lower that left knee to the floor. Because when we're lifted, it might be a way up off the mat. So if we come forward, it gives us the opportunity to ground that left knee down. And then we're gonna rotate now, right shoulder down, looking towards the left. Either staying here. This is a great place to be. You're getting all of the benefits of the twist and of the um, leg placement. Or if you wanna go for the bind, you would take right, right hand to left knee. Left arm moves around to find your toes. Once you have your toes, Use your right arm as leverage and the grip on your toes to pull yourself a little deeper. And this right arm can stay on the knee or it can reach around and you use your forearm onto your left thigh to create that leverage to twist you a little deeper, still leaning forward in this posture. One more breath. Remember the bind is totally optional. You can just keep both hands on the knees. And then exhale, slowly come back through the center, release the bind, hands on the knees again, leaning forward for a counter, rolling that left shoulder forward and down, looking back over right shoulder. And then exhale, slowly release, come back to center. Release both legs, extend them out, shake them out for a moment. Good. One more twist here before we come into um, a little different movement of the body. So we're gonna take that left leg, extend it, bring right knee in towards the body. You can keep that right foot planted on the inside of the left leg or take it on the outside of the left leg. So the foot is flat on the floor. From here, you can take that left arm around, get a, get a nice hug of that left uh, right knee, and then right arm behind you, look over right shoulder. Make sure that that left leg is contracted. You can flex the foot or point through the ball or through the toes, the ball of the foot or through the toes. If you like, that right arm can reach around for your left side waist if you don't need it behind you. Otherwise, keep it behind you to help support your weight. But don't lean back into it. Barely fingertips touching the floor, rotating heart. Decide where you want that right hand to be. And then exhale, slowly coming back through the center. Let's release the right leg. Extend. We'll do the other side. Left foot pulls in. Close it into the body. You can keep it here and rotate from this place or take it across to the outside of your right leg. You might need to adjust a little bit here. Once your foot is flat on the floor planted, right arm reaches around, giving your left knee a big hug, left hand fingertips to the floor, look back behind you, find your twist. So you always wanna twist gently and easily and move slowly. Because that way you get to decide, oh, you know, something doesn't quite feel right. Or maybe I went too fast or too deep into the twist. Maybe you need to readjust and hug your knee a little bit more. And then again, remember, if you don't need that left hand behind you, 
And you're always welcome to take it to your right side waist as you rotate your torso, look over left shoulder. So the hand behind you is definitely helpful to help support your back. But if you draw in through navel and you hold on tight with your right arm, you might be able to release it to your left side waist. Sorry, right side waist. And then slowly release the hand, release everything back to center, extend legs, another little shaking out of the legs, crossing the feet, tucking the both feet under, Hands gonna come in front. We're gonna roll ourselves, so use momentum. Roll yourself to come up, so you can press into your hands, walk your feet back, come to your downward facing dog. So as you find your downward facing dog, lengthen spine here, strong fingers, hips up, shoulders back and down. Neck and head is totally relaxed. There's no tension there whatsoever. Keep drawing in through navel, keep lengthening through both side bodies. And then exhale, slowly bring the knees down. And we're gonna lower down to the floor in a nice, easy chaturanga or knees down, chest down. So we'll do knees down, chest down first. Make sure that the hands are slightly in front. Bring your weight forward so your hips are forward past your knees. Bend your elbows and lower your chest to the floor, keeping your hips lifted. Once your chest and chin come to the floor, inhale, slide yourself forward and slide your arms forward to come into Sphinx. So in Sphinx pose, your elbows are directly underneath your shoulders, so not too much forward, not too much back. They get to make adjustments so that you are supported by your elbows. Your arms are about shoulder width apart. You can look down and see your forearms, two sides of a letter H. Separate your feet a little bit so you have room in your tailbone, in your lower back, to lift your chest up and roll your shoulders back, gaze forward. So we're going to practice this one with a smile on our face, trying to bring joy into our lives here. We're going to try to lift the left leg, straight left leg off the floor. So not just the foot, but the whole left leg off the floor, even the thigh. So as we lift, it may not come up more than just a fraction of the inch off the floor. That's okay. Smile, do it with joy, joyful effort. That's what we want to use here. As you reach the chest forward, gaze forward, left leg up. Exhale, lower left leg down. Good, let's do the other side. Inhaling, lifting through the arms, pressing the arms fully into the floor so that you are engaging into your biceps and triceps and now the right leg comes up. So with that right leg straight, point through the toe. You're gonna feel it in your right side glute, but try to relax your left glute because it's the right side we're working on here. Again, that joyful effort, shoulders rolling back, using the back muscles, keep the chest lifted. Gaze is forward, neck is long. Hold and breathe. Good. And then exhale, slowly lower down. Lower the chest down to the floor. You can turn your head one way. Make a pillow for your head. Rest here for a few breaths. Okay, we're gonna move into Dhanurasana. So, Especially after not having practiced in a while, this is a good one to, to move very, very slowly into. So I'm going to break it down into three parts. Right arm is in front, and you're not going to push into your right arm, not like we did before in space. The right arm is there for support and nothing else. You're going to bring your left knee, bend your left knee, bring your left foot towards your body, and then reach around, grab the big toe side of your left foot. This is going to help rotate your shoulder out. But what we're going to try to do here is lift the thigh off the floor, just like how we did before. So your right leg is relaxed on the floor, try not to tense it. Lift through the chest and point the toe up, lifting the thigh as high up off the floor as you can. Gaze towards your right forearm. Find lift in that left leg. Kick up, let the, let the kick drive that left side shoulder back, and then exhale, lower down, release. Left arm replaces the right. You can take a break if you want. <laughs> Looking the other direction, maybe. And then we'll go ahead and do the other side. So remember that left arm there is for support. You're not pushing into it. You're not lifting that way. You're gonna use your right leg, bend into the knee, reach around, find the big toe side of your foot so your right shoulder opens out. Relax into your left leg. Don't tense it tight. Let it soften. And then begin to kick your right leg up, lifting your right 
side, thigh, off the floor. Gaze down towards your forearm. The more you kick, the more your right shoulder pulls back, the more you stretch. A little bit of weight in that left arm, but remember, you're not pushing the floor away with that left arm. You're using the kick to lift you. Hold one more breath. See if you can kick any more. Relax left side body. And exhale, lower down. Release both arms forward. Maybe bring the forehead down. Rest here. Breath or two. Okay, if you feel like that was tough, you're gonna repeat left and right side again, but I'm gonna give you the option to do both legs together. So we're gonna bend through the knees, reach both arms behind, grabbing the pinky toe side of the feet this time, chin is on the floor. So you can grab the feet or you can grab the ankles, maybe that's a little bit more accessible for you. Either way, the knees, are about hip width apart, but try to bring them a little bit closer because they like to splay out when we come up. Shoulders roll back and slowly kick. Kick your legs up, lift your chest, gaze forward, shoulders back, thighs are off the floor. Kick, 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 hold there, three, two, keep kicking, don't stop kicking, and one, slowly lower down. So if you did one side, we're going to repeat that on the other side, or you're going to do two sets in with both legs. Take a moment. Notice as you come down to the floor, when your breath is moving, your back kind of expands with the inhale and then contracts with the exhale. So become aware of your breath. All right, last one, Dhanurasana, bending through the knees, reaching back, grabbing the pinky toe sides of the feet. We can keep the chin on the floor, draw the knees a little closer together, roll the shoulders back, inhale, lift, kick, lift the chest, kick up with the legs, lift the heart, lift the torso, gaze forward. Maybe you can even roll a little bit here. Give your abdomen a nice massage. Ah, oh, feels good. Little roll feels good. If not, then just keep it steady. You don't have to roll. You don't have to sway. You don't have to do anything that doesn't feel right for you. Shoulders pulling back. And then exhale, slowly lower down. Turn your head to the side. Rest there for a few breaths. And slowly pressing into the hands. Lifting onto hands and knees. Sit back for your balasana pose. So hips go all the way down to the heels, arms extend forward, forehead to the floor. You can practice this with your knees apart or with your knees together the way I'm doing it here. Either way works just fine. You'll see a difference in the hips, but you know, practicing it both ways is a good idea. If you're always doing balasana with your knees apart, try it with your knees together and vice versa. A few more breaths. And slowly lift the head, coming back to tabletop. So we're going to make our way back onto our backs. So the best way to do this is to, let's start with coming into downward facing. So pressing up, pedaling out the legs, swaying the hips, getting reacquainted with our downward facing dog. Whatever feels good for you here. We're going to take a deep inhale breath and bring the heels off the floor. But try not to bring your weight forward over your hands. So keep your weight back, heels up, heels up, onto the tippy tippy toes, and then exhale, heels down. Again, let's do that two more times. Inhale, heels up, or in through belly, up, 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 high onto the tippy toes, strong fingers, exhale, heels down. Last one. Inhale up, 
Strong arms, strong shoulders. Stay on your tippy toes. Draw in through navel, legs straight, chest towards thighs. Exhale. Heels down. Looking forward between your hands. You're going to take the right foot forward to the top of the foot is by your left wrist. And then same thing with the right. Slide forward and come to seated. So from the seated position, go ahead and extend your legs. You're going to lay back. We're going to practice a little bit into shoulder scan. I remember, if I remember correctly, Kathy, this is a hard one for you to do. So do what you can. I'll give you an option to make it a little bit more stable. You can place a block or a bolster underneath your hips. So just placing something underneath your hips and bringing your legs up will help you kind of find a little bit of an inversion. But if you're going to come into shoulder scan, you want to have the momentum of your legs, lift your hips so you can bring your hands underneath your lower back and find extension of legs, pressing into the shoulders. So whichever version you are in, whether you're in full um, shoulder stand or maybe your legs are slightly over your face, that sometimes tends to happen when we first come back to practice, or maybe you just have your hips down over onto your bolster or block, Either way is fine. Engage into the legs, point the toes, look up towards the toes or towards your navel. And then exhale, slowly lower the hips down, bringing the legs overhead for halasana. Take your time. You don't have to go into the full posture. Keep your hands at your lower back to support it until your feet come flat to the floor. So once the feet are on the floor, you can release your arms, gaze towards your navel, relax shoulders. Let's hold here. If your feet are off the floor, you're just using your hands to support your weight. A few more breaths. And then exhale. We're going to begin the trajectory back down. So palms flat on the floor. Slowly start to lower your hips towards the mat. Try to keep your legs lengthened and engaged as the hips come down. Keep your head on the floor, shoulders on the floor, the hips come all the way down. Good. And so we're back to where we started, so you might have stayed here the whole time. Go ahead and bend your knees. Lift your hips, and keeping your palms down, connect your thumbs underneath your body, lengthen and reach your shoulders under. Once you lower your hips onto your forearms, release the, thumb, the thumbs, and go ahead and extend your legs. So we're going into fish pose, pressing into the forearms, lift the head, so lengthening, and then exhale, drop the top of the head back, keeping the lift in the shoulders and the weight in the forearms. Strong forearms pressing into the floor. You can grip them out with your fingertips or you can relax them. The weight of your body, your glutes are on your upper wrist or in your forearms here. Press a little bit more into the elbows, lift through the chest and rib cage, and then exhale, release top of the head, come down, release the arms. That creates a little bit of a tourniquet effect in the arms, so it's possible you might feel tingling or cold or heat sensation through your fingers from the blood circulation not moving through. So now that it's coming back through, it creates that sensation. You can move your fingers, take a fist and extend. Nice stillness in the body. Go ahead and bring right knee into the body. Pull the right knee in towards the chest. As the right knee pulls in, keep pressing that left leg away. And then exhale, taking that right leg over the body towards the floor, look to the right. So we start with the gentle twist, just the rotation of torso. No worries, this right knee doesn't quite come to the floor. Be more concerned with the right shoulder staying on the mat. You can extend your arm like a T, or you can have it bent at the elbow, kind of like a goalpost or a cactus. Look to the right, find your deepest twist. And then exhale, slowly coming back through the center, hugging the right knee into the body, 
Massaging the ascending colon on the right side. Release the right leg, extend it up towards the ceiling so you're making like scissor shapes or an L shape with your legs. Let's lower the right leg to the floor, working on right side obliques. Good. Once the right leg is down, bring the left leg into the body. Readjust through your hips so you feel supported. Go ahead and extend right leg. Draw the left knee in. Shoulders are down on the mat. Breath is steady and rhythmic. And then what we'll do is we're going to take that left leg across the body, bringing the left leg all the way over and rolling onto your right side body, making sure this left shoulder stays down. So we're going to look to the left. You can extend your arm completely or bring it into that cactus shape. The cactus shape will have a little bit more tension in that left top front of the left shoulder. So you can decide if that's too much, just have the arm straight or even down towards your body. Whatever you decide your left arm to be, look to the left and use your right hand to guide that knee down towards the earth. Doesn't matter if it touches or not, it's just pulling in that direction. And then close your eyes, soften your breath, be here for a moment or two. And slowly exhaling, coming back through to center. Realign your hips and shoulders, hugging that left knee into the body, kind of tracking over your left shoulder so you don't want it over your chest and rib cage. It's a little bit up to the side, massaging the descending colon on this side. Hold it in tight. And then releasing the arms down by your sides. Lifting up through that left leg, making that L shape with your left, with your two legs. And then flexing through the foot and lowering that left leg down towards the floor. Very slow, very steady, working on the left side obliques. Once that left foot comes all the way down, bringing both knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice tight hug. This time we're massaging the transverse colon that goes across the body at the lower belly. So squeeze, you can hold on to your knees or your opposite elbows, really creating a tight, tight little seed, little hugged in legs. Draw the shoulders back, maybe even lift the forehead towards the knees, rounding through the spine, getting a better grip. And then once you have it, let the head come back down. Bring the legs along with you. Nice stretch into the lower back. Slowly release your grip. Going for a happy baby, open the knees wide. Let the knees kind of just fold over the shoulders. You want the knees open wide. And then arms inside the legs, grab the pinky toe sides of your feet. If you can't grab your feet, maybe you can grab your shins or your ankles. So once you have your grip, lift the heels, find your happy baby. So happy baby, if you can move side to side. Kind of massaging the lower back and the middle back a little bit. Or you can be perfectly still. You can even close your eyes and kind of meditate on the sensations of the body as we hold this posture. More breaths. Remember, whenever your body gives you a little green light to go a little deeper, you might want to pull a little bit more with your hands and draw those knees closer and closer to the earth. And we're going to keep the right leg and right hand just as they are. Nothing changes on the right side. On the left side, grab a hold of your big toe if it's accessible, or you can use a strap for this one too. And then we're gonna extend that left leg, letting the left elbow heavy, pull that left leg down towards the earth. So you're just gonna feel the stretch on that left side and definitely in the right side, groin and inner thigh. 
the right leg hasn't moved. It stays just as it was before. Couple of breaths. And then exhale, slowly bring that left leg back. So come back to that same posture as before. Now the left leg stays put. Grab the big toe or we use the strap of the right leg and then extend that right leg out using the right elbow as a heavy weight to pull the leg down towards the earth. Keeping that left leg right where it was before so you're not changing into that left leg whatsoever. Breathe here. And exhale slowly back to our happy baby. Maybe a little bit more sway or movement. Maybe a lift in the head to kind of gaze down, finding roundness in the spine. Slowly lower the head. Bring the heels down towards the floor. Bring the knees in towards each other. Let the feet plant down. We'll do one set of bridge. So plant the feet on the floor. Arms down by your sides. Fingers reaching towards your heels. Inhale, lift up through hips, wriggle shoulders under. Maybe you can interlace your hands behind your back. Pull your shoulders under, keep the hips lifted, keep the gaze towards the navel, hips up. Shoulders push into the floor, hips up more. Hips up more, push the floor away with your feet. Keep your knees parallel to each other. They like to splay up to the sides. Engage into your inner thighs. Hips up, hold and breathe, almost there. And exhale, release the hands, slowly lower down towards the floor. Once you're down all the way onto the mat, one more time, bring the knees in, but this time, instead of hugging them in so close, just hold on to the knees with your hands and give a little circle to your lower back. So, Feel it in your lower back, the knees are circling around, but your lower back's getting a little bit of a massage. And then go in the other direction. Good, almost there. And slowly coming back through to center. We're gonna bring the soles of the feet together, let the knees fall out. It's like a Baddha Konasana, but we're reclined on our backs. So let the hands either rest on your lap or on your knees, whatever feels comfortable for you. If you like, you can also let them rest down on your sides, palms facing up. Getting ready here for our Shavasana, we're just gonna do one more movement into the hips. So soften shoulders, close the eyes. Allow gravity to pull the legs down away from you. Let the breath move steady and rhythmic. And then slowly using your hands to help guide your knees back to center. We're gonna straighten the legs to come into our Shavasana. Arms down by your sides, eyes closed. Reconnect with the pace and rhythm of your breath. Letting all the muscles in your body soften, relax. Feel your belly rising and falling with each inhale and with each exhale. Feel a sense of ease moving through your body, sense of calm, steadiness.
With the next exhale, breath will begin to bring awareness back into this physical space. With your eyes closed, just envision the room you are in. Envision the wall in front of you. What's on that wall? The wall behind you. What's on that wall? Envision the floor and the ceiling and the room that you are now in. And then slowly start to add a little bit of movement to the fingers and the toes. A little bit of movement to the hands and the feet, the arms and the legs, gently reawakening the body. As you're ready, bend your elbows, bend your knees, let your knees fall in towards each other. You can rest your hands at your belly, at your heart, or one at each. And then gently, gently, we're gonna roll over onto the side body. Taking your bottom arm out to extend it out like a pillow. Your top arm is in front for support, knees are bent. And you're welcome to keep your eyes closed here still, that awareness inward. As you're ready, pressing into your hand, slowly sliding yourself up, coming to a seated posture. Kind of concluding our practice in the same way we started. Take your time, there's no rush. Once you're in your comfortable seated posture, you can let your hands rest on your lap, on your knees, on your shins, on your thighs, wherever it's comfortable for your hands to be. Just find a natural place for them. Take inventory of your body, notice any new sensations or notice if any old sensations have gone away or softened in any way. Inventory of your mood, your mental state, your emotional state. Become aware of anything that might be going on around you that is just brought up. Could be a sound or a smell, a movement. Finally, as you exhale, go ahead and bring your palms together at the center of your heart signifying that union of body, mind, and spirit. We'll inhale together for one sound, Om. Namaste.